Welcome to Music Theory Basics. Today, we will be looking at what a compound interval is. Now, if you remember, our intervals have a descriptive word. This can be perfect, major, minor, augmented, or diminished. If you're not sure of these words, make sure to check out our earlier videos just so that you're clear on this. And don't forget to download our handy cheat sheets if you're short on time. The link is in the bio. But first of all, let's look at our regular intervals. We've seen these before, we know what they are. So our base note here is middle C. C to D is a second. C to E is a third. C to F is a fourth, etc. But a compound interval is an interval that is larger than an octave. So take a look at these intervals. They are all larger than an octave, as you can see. But how do we go about naming our compound intervals? There are two methods that we can use. Method one involves us counting on. So here we have a G and an E. How many notes do we have between the G and E? Let's have a look, let's write them out. As you can see, E is 13 notes higher than G, making this the interval of a 13. Is E natural in G major? We still ask ourselves the same questions. E natural is in G major, so this is therefore a major 13. Easy as that. But we can also use method two. Method two involves us lowering the top note by an octave. So let's write out that same interval and bring that high E down an octave to E on the stave. Now what is the distance between these two notes? Let's write out the beginning of G major. As you can see, E is the sixth note of G major, and it is in the G major scale, making this a major sixth. But remember, our original interval was larger than an octave, and to show this, we need to use the word compound. So the answer is a compound major sixth. Both of these answers are absolutely correct, and you can use either, whichever you find the easiest. So this interval is a major 13th, but it is also a compound major 6th. So have a look at the diagram here. Our first interval is an octave. We know this one, C to C is 8 notes. Now if we move that high C to a D, this then becomes a ninth, because there are nine notes between that middle C and the D. But this can also be called a compound second. If we look at the next one, and we move that D to an E, this now becomes a tenth, because there are ten notes between the middle C and the E that we have written. But this can also be called a compound third. However, if you remember, with our simple intervals, some of these we have to use the word perfect. This is the same when we talk about intervals larger than an octave. So this applies to the intervals of an eleventh and twelfth, or obviously the compound fourth 
and compound fifth. So we would call these perfect eleventh or perfect twelfth, or compound perfect fourth or compound perfect fifth. This is very important to remember if you use method one. If you use method two, you of course already know that the fourth and fifth will be perfect. So let's do a few examples. What's the distance between these two notes? Let's count up. As you can see, the distance is a twelfth. Then we ask ourselves the same question we would if we had a simple interval. And we ask ourselves, is C natural in F major? And it is, so this is a perfect twelfth. Let's try another example, but for this one, let's use method two. So let's bring that high C double sharp down an octave. A much nicer interval to work out. So, what number note is C in the E major scale? As you can see, it's the sixth. But in our interval that we're working out, we have a C double sharp. Now C double sharp is one semitone larger than the C sharp that is in E major. So this makes this interval an augmented sixth. Now if you remember, our original interval is one octave higher, so we need to remember to use our word compound. So the answer to this question is compound augmented sixth. Don't forget to download our handy cheat sheet. The link for this is in the bio. And I can't wait to see you at the next Music Theory Basics video. Do let me know if there are any specific topics that you would like me to cover. I look forward to seeing you next week.